News? Here's some more of that, yes sirree. It sure does seem like it's going to news today. Just a, a torrent of the crazy stuff. <laughs> Don't believe me? Well, how do you explain all this news I have right here? News like how U.S. Representative Devin Nunes, a member of President Trump's transition team and top ears plugger denial boy on the Intelligence Committee for the impeachment inquiry, has been accused of traveling to Vienna on taxpayer money to personally seek out dirt on Joe Biden. This is according to the lawyer of Lev Parnas, a crime guy working for Rudy Giuliani, lawyer for the president, AKA the man Nunes is in charge of impeaching for using taxpayer money to get dirt on Joe Biden. House travel records have corroborated this claim and will likely result in a totally separate inquiry regarding Nunes, the guy that also has coincidentally defended the president against accusations of the exact same thing. So that's, you know, Alarming, I guess, is a good word for it. And while that is certainly worthy of its own video, perhaps titled Some More Nunez. Future episode, Some More Nunez. All right. Star shape. Star shape, hero, and penis. Anyway, I'd actually like to speak on a much larger pattern that this story fits into. Specifically, how there sure seems like a lot of people in Donald Trump's circle of support that end up having their entire careers snuffed harder than a hamster in a kindergarten class. Just in the executive office of the president alone, there have been 152 dismissals and resignations, not to mention the hundreds more in other departments. In the first year of his presidency, Trump's turnover rate was three times higher than any president going back to Reagan. And that's just the people losing their jobs, as opposed to jail time, or simply losing all credibility and becoming macabre walking jokes, like a zombie in a clown wig. It's like, I don't know, like a mysterious curse surrounding our totally innocent president, where those who associate with him and support him end up regretting it for some clearly supernatural reason. And just to fully illustrate this unexplainable phenomenon, allow me to do a quick recap of the highlights. Nah, heck, why not start with Michael Flynn? Remember that guy? The Flinster, as we all called him? The Flynn Effect. Flynn dude. Flynn Flimini, Flynn Flynn Fleuru. All the way back in 2016, he not only campaigned with Trump and led the Lock Her Up chants, but was actually being vetted for the position of vice president at the time. Now, we don't have to go into every gosh darn detail, but Flynn's journey ended with him being hired as Trump's national security advisor, despite warnings from the previous president, and then fired before going under investigation and pleading guilty to lying to the FBI about Russia. Trump then wished him luck on the whole being sentenced for crimes thing, and then later claimed he wasn't warned about hiring Flynn, despite him absolutely being warned about hiring Flynn the guy who was caught lying about Russia stuff for the president. And of course, so many more people would go on to be arrested for associating with Trump's campaign and have Trump distance himself from them. People like George Papadopoulos, who went to Moscow for dirt on Clinton, would be called a low-level volunteer and liar for his efforts. Then we all just, we all just moved on to the next thing, as if the first thing wasn't totally messed up. The next thing being Sean Spicer, who resigned as White House press secretary, not because he tweeted out his Twitter password twice, but because he disagreed with the hiring of Anthony Scaramucci, a longtime supporter of Democrats who turned to the Trump administration, presumably because he believes in nothing. Of course, Scaramucci would go on to have the shortest career as communications director ever after getting fired 10 days later for randomly calling a New Yorker reporter and ranting profanely about other people in Trump's White House. It was during this that the president tweeted out the words, no White House chaos, further supporting the theory that this was all part of some wayward magic. Anywho, Spicer would go on to be totally humiliated in multiple interviews before deciding to go on Dancing with the Stars, losing, and therefore prompting Trump to actually delete previous tweets supporting him on Dancing with the Stars. And I know it's like, it's the least important part of all this, but I can't stress enough that Trump deleted his support of Spicer, a man who has lied to the public for him after he lost Dancing with the Stars. 
like some kind of disappointed stage parent. Like, he could have followed up with, it was great while it lasted, I'm proud of my Spice Man. Or, my baby Spice did a great job on Dancing with the Stars, hashtag Spicy Meatball. Or something supportive. But now we know exactly how willing Trump is to throw people under the bus to save face. He will f***ing disown you if you lose a reality show dancing contest. No compromise, Spice-o. Who else? Remember that Priebus fellow? The Preeb, we exclaimed at the time. After heading the RNC since 2012, becoming White House Chief of Staff, and being ordered to kill a fly that was bothering the president, he was pushed out of the White House after six months and replaced with John F. Kelly. Kel Kel! Trump would later call Priebus to complain about Kel Kel, which I'm sure Priebus was very emotionally receptive to. This is despite endless tweets by Trump insisting that Kelly was doing a great job, all the way until Kelly left the position in 2018 which, according to the White House press secretary, was because he was ill-equipped to handle the genius that is our president. So that's, you know, an assessment that people um, might not agree with. Seems dubious, is what this guy is thinking. Then there's Rex Tillerson, of course. The T-Rex, who got fired via tweet by Trump. Like, that was literally how he learned he was fired. Oh, and Steve Bannon, the melty racist, who helped Trump on his campaign and shaped his winning message and co-formed his travel ban and was his chief strategist, but also, according to Trump, had nothing to do with him or his presidency and lost his mind as soon as Bannon said unkind words about him after leaving the administration, or maybe getting fired depending on who you ask, which was oddly right after all those Nazis showed up in Charlottesville and Trump gave the both sides speech that Bannon apparently advised him on doing, and then Trump distanced himself from Bannon before Bannon left the White House? Like, uh, like Bannon was kind of the white supremacist that helped, helped Trump get where he is, and then it was dumped the moment people were like, hey now, are you guys, uh, some kind of white supremacist? There's much more, of course, like when Jeff Sessions, a guy who supported Trump since before the primaries, recused himself from the Russia investigation, so Trump called him weak, and later forced him to resign. And Michael Cohen, currently serving three years, who was once Trump's special counsel and fixer who had an office in Trump Tower, who Trump immediately distanced himself from and called a liar the moment he was caught violating campaign finance laws by paying off a woman that Trump had slept with. For Trump. And of course it wasn't enough to take Cohen down because the investigation revealed that Sean Hannity was also using his services as a lawyer, further spraying the shit on more people who had defended the president. He's like a terrible roommate that talks big at first, tells you he's, he's your best buddy, and then secretly pisses in your shampoo bottles the moment you complain about his dirty dishes. Everyone who tries to help him either gets fired for not doing the illegal things he wants, or does the illegal thing he wants and gets pushed away the moment you get caught. It's probably why Trump loves having acting people in these positions, saying, I like having non-permanent to a certain extent. It gives me more flexibility. I like having acting. You know, because of the mysterious curse, of course. That weird curse where if you support Trump, you almost always end up getting screwed over by reasons. Also that weird curse that makes you talk like no other human ever and say things like, I like having non-permanent. I like having acting, you weirdo. So now that we're on to the impeachment inquiry, Devin Nunes is probably next. And of course there's Giuliani and those crime guys that work for him that have pictures meeting with Trump, but Trump totally doesn't know. In fact, according to Trump, Giuliani, his lawyer, might not even be his lawyer. You know, depending on how things go with him. Man who says he has insurance against Trump in case he throws him under the bus. An apparently sarcastic comment, you know, like, like MTV's Daria. Some real sass that crime lawyer has when he speaks of having insurance against the president in case that president ever tries to implicate him in crimes. The insurance against Trump apparently being information damaging to Trump's political opponent. So, exactly how insurance works. Rick Perry is clearly on the dicking block as well, as Trump has blamed him for the call with Ukraine, despite having also said, 
Rick Perry, watch him. He's a comer. Which would probably explain why Perry, an alleged comer, has now gone on record calling Trump God's chosen one. Because as we learned from Marie Ivanovich's testimony, describing advice she got from Gordon Sondland, the best recommendation when Trump is mad at you is to publicly praise him so you don't get screwed. But we'll probably get screwed anyway. Suck that golden rod, suck it good, lest you be cast from the kingdom of God's very special genius man. Oh right, Gordon Sondland is a person as well. After he gave testimony implicating our beloved president, the Trumpster claimed that he doesn't know him very well, despite there being, like, way too much evidence showing that he was frequently in contact with Trump and, uh, you know, appointed by Trump after giving a million dollars to Trump's inauguration. This is now the pattern with every new scandal. Trump orders people to do crimes for him for as long as they can get away with it before cutting them off the moment things go bad and somehow getting away untouched. He's like, he's like Kaiser Soze in that he is also played by a sex criminal. And all of this jaunty betrayal happened long before he became the president. When Trump was in his 30s, he used attorney Roy Cohn, former f***ing prosecutor for f***ing Joseph McCarthy during his Red Scare f***ing inquiries and later mentor to Trump to help with zoning issues and shady tax reductions in order to erect his hotels. When a New York Post reporter dug into Trump's properties avoiding New York finance laws, a thing he did do, it was Cohn who would call and threaten them with lawsuits. Even the first time they met, Trump asked him for advice on a Department of Justice lawsuit claiming his apartments discriminated against African Americans, which they absolutely did do. This was a close business relationship Cohn being the guy who would later introduce Trump to Roger Stone, uh, no, another criminal that was thrown under the bus. But as Cohn got more and more entangled and was indicted for unrelated acts of extortion and blackmail and conspiracy and securities fraud, Trump slowly downplayed his association with him for, for some reason. And I can't stress enough, this was a mentor to Trump who would later adopt a lot of Cohn's own phrases and regularly attend parties and events with him, and who to this day laments not having a Cohn, which is to say a good crime lawyer. But anyway, this continued until the early 80s, when rumors traveled that Cohn had contracted AIDS, and according to Cohn's personal secretary, Trump dropped him like a hot potato. By 1985, Roy's health was seriously degrading, and when he asked Trump to give his lover, also dying of AIDS, a room in one of his hotels as a favor, Trump agreed before secretly billing Roy for the room. And while Trump was setting up casinos in Atlantic City, Roy would die completely broke, using his final years to curse his once Padawan. Trump was not a speaker at the funeral, but simply stood in the back like a greasy specter. And is anyone watching right now surprised by any of any of this? Just Googling the words Trump and past takes you on a Willy Wonka tunnel ride through decades of business failures and piling vendettas. Those Atlantic City casinos like the Taj Mahal, you know, the one he called the eighth wonder of the world before it went down like a flaming eagle? That all started when Trump claimed at a licensing hearing that he would avoid junk bonds in order to fund the project before immediately turning to those junk bonds when he was approved. The casino was then suspected of money laundering used for mobsters after it opened and filing Chapter 11 a year after that. It finally died in 2016 after the workers went on strike because they weren't getting health care. This is just regular business and personal stuff for Trump. The man who touches things and then those things suddenly explode for some reason that must be a curse. He has a very real paper trail of skipping bills, not paying taxes, and suing friends because of personal grievances. There are 60 lawsuits concerning contractors and employees who Trump simply didn't pay. A cabinet builder for the registration desks at Trump Plaza, out $83,600. A heating and air conditioning company, out $75,000. Plumbers, bartenders, construction companies, even the lawyers who defended Trump from other lawsuits over bills also have outstanding bills against Trump. When that Trump Taj Mahal was audited, it was discovered that the company owed $69.5 nice, million to 253 different subcontractors. Most of these lawsuits were either dragged out for years or settled out of court. 
Trump sucks the money out of people, loses that money with bad business plans, and then claims he did nothing wrong and attacks the people around him for doing a bad job. Remember that, that shampoo pissing roommate analogy from before? Well, this is how that roommate claims that all the other roommates he's ever had are always jerks without wondering what that common factor is. Trump is a vindictive money black hole. When Trump's brother was cut out of their dad's will and his niece and nephew sued the family, Trump retaliated by cutting off his medical funding for their sick baby. Not hearsay, but according to an interview with Trump where he said, I was angry because they sued. He ran a scam university that left graduates penniless. I feel like this history isn't, isn't a big revelation. This history being that Trump is chronically a bad person leaving an endless trail of burning bridges. But not just any bad person. A bad person who specifically ruins the lives of people who go out of their way to support him. No better symbolism of this is the fact that his campaign trail has left over a million dollars in outstanding bills in the cities he visits. And that's the big hurt here. Because now that Trump runs the country, he's going to operate the country the same way he operates his businesses. Something he claimed he would do. Which means backstabbing the people who help and support him. You know, like, like the Kurds. And side note, when his Secretary of Defense resigned over Trump's plan to pull out of Syria, Trump later claimed he fired him and called him overrated. And along with Syria, there's the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Paris Climate Accord, the Iran nuclear deal. He is us now. We are him. The scumbag country reneging on promises and not paying bills. And I know you're all aware of a lot of this and angry to hear it. And now you're about to get more angry because the one group of people that doesn't feel like Trump screwed them over is his supporters. Despite the fact that Trump is totally not acting in their best interest, he's very good at giving the perception that he's kept his campaign promises. Because for a lot of them, he has. He got them their Supreme Court nominee. Pulling out of the Paris climate deal was something he ran on. He wanted to cut corporate taxes and then did that thing. Doesn't matter if those things were effective or good. He said he would do them and then did them. And then glossed over all the stuff he totally didn't do. Because that's how the con works. He roped in the most susceptible, talked a big game, and will give just enough to make people feel like they haven't been screwed. So his followers will support him up until they don't. And at that point, Trump will probably claim he never knew them and that the American people are losers. And a lot of people are saying that he was never really the president at all. And then he'll move on to, I don't know, designing his own car or something. The cyber Trump. Y'all gonna be tooling around in those cyber Trumps pretty darn soon? They're gonna be terrible. Five hundred grand for a cyber Trump. What's up, my beautiful babies? Thank you so much for watching that video. Please like and subscribe and do all the other YouTube stuff. Check us out on patreon.com slash some more news if you'd like to support us. And we've got a podcast called Even More News. And that's the end. Why wouldn't you, why, what? Hey, hi.